One of the toughest middleweights in the division's history will make a long-awaited return after over a year-long hiatus. Paulo Costa has used his physical prowess to impose an exceptional pressure and tenacity in his fights against top contenders of the sport. At the same time, he showcased great well-roundedness in his defense and offense throughout his career. But with a canceled bout against the Chechen grappling powerhouse still fresh in our memory, and an upcoming match with former champ Robert Whitaker soon to take place, Costa may want to take a page out of Duplessis' playbook and take the fight to the mat. It raises the question, how good is Paulo Costa's grappling? What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim. Today I'm going to be breaking down the grappling skills of Paulo Costa. In order to do that, I'm going to look at six key elements of grappling as they relate to the sport of MMA. For each category, I give a score based on a scale from 1 to 10, and then at the end of the video, I take the average of those scores to get an overall grade. I base these grades off my own observations of their most recent fights of relevance and the quality of the opponents that they have faced. Every fight begins standing, so let's start with takedown defense. It's important to note that Costa is very fundamentally sound defensively. This is especially true in the case of his takedown defense. There are no scenarios where it is easy to ground the Brazilian. With that being said, I think there are some areas where it can be easier than others, particularly against the cage. Costa has an excellent sprawl, so when he is blocked from using it, his game is thrown off a bit. Telegraphed or poorly set up shots simply do not stand a chance against Costa's sprawl. Paulo shrugs off open mat takedowns that have better setups too, but watch how when he's pushed up against the fence after that initial shot, his center of gravity is so low already that he sort of just gets sat down. We see this time and again where Costa is so devoted to a defensive level change that it doesn't take much for him to be dragged down. He even has some trouble when he's more upright against the fence, allowing space for opponents to get under his hips for a strong lift. The later rounds is where it's a lot easier to take Boricina down, even in open spaces. With such heavy commitment to his punching offense, clever opponents with good timing can duck under and shoot. The most redeeming quality of this category is, without a doubt, Costa's ability to stand up almost immediately after being taken down. It's rare to see Paulo Costa get grounded and controlled for more than a few seconds. His explosiveness and frames allow for him to create scrambles and reposition, taking zero damage in the process, rendering the effort of getting him down basically pointless. This detail could be a major factor in potential matchups against guys like Chemayev and other takedown experts. I think the question will really be, can Costa get back up to his feet without making himself vulnerable in the scramble? So with all this being considered, I'm going to give him the score of 7.75 for takedown defense. Next is ground and pound defense, and I'll say that right off the bat, he's got a lot going for him here. And the fact that he usually gets back up to his feet right after being taken down indirectly contributes to this, but I'm not going to include it in this part of the analysis. The reason being because during those scenarios, Paulo is actually taking advantage of a lack of control by his opponents during their takedown attempts. This category is defined more by what happens after the control is established, and the thing about Costa is, once you've held him down for those first few seconds after the takedown, as rare as that is, you've pretty much got him stuck there for at least a good while. Paulo has also ended up in a bottom position from sweeps and reversals before, which I will touch on more later. But my point here being is, it's not impossible to get Paulo in a bottom spot. A huge asset to his defense from the bottom position is that he almost always manages to establish a full guard, which is essential for preventing big punches, because it gives your legs the leverage to break the posture of an opponent or kick away if needed. We can also see that from that full guard, Costa immediately swims inside for overhooks to tie up the arms and assist his legs in the breaking of posture. I'd like to see a bit more of a sweeping and reversal ability from Paulo, as well as more of a sense of urgency to stand back up. But to be fair, the only times he's gotten stuck on the bottom were moments where the round or the fight was almost over. So maybe he was aware of this and was just playing the game. I would have liked to see a few more examples of this in Paulo's career, but they are few and far between. However brief, he has proven himself here against contenders and former champs, the latter of which is a very underrated grappler. Costa couldn't prevent the good old bloody nose fountain to the face though. 
Side note, as disgusting and slightly hilarious as this is, I have to give props to Rockhold for being the first and only person I've seen utilize this technique. Personally, I've always thought that if that was me and you made me bleed, I'm absolutely going to try to bleed directly in your face as a gross form of retaliation. There's something wrong with me. Strong category for Paulo here, so he is going to get an 8.75 out of 10. Next category to go over is submission defense. Wasn't a lot to sift through here, so I'm going to try my best to work with what I have. Paulo Costa's ability to position himself safely is a significant factor here. If the worst bottom position you've ever been forced into is a full or open guard, that's going to make submissions much harder to apply on you. Paulo's defensive positioning is on point at almost all times. The exception to this is when he is forcing a transition, specifically when he's trying to stand back up to his feet or when he's trying to bail on a takedown. We pretty much see both of these sequences displayed in his one loss on the Ultimate Fighter. This anaconda choke in particular is an excellent example of the latter. He goes for a lazy takedown due to exhaustion and leaves his head and arm there to be grabbed. Lyoto actually does an excellent job of locking this up right away. Paulo goes for what is actually a very risky way to try and escape this, which is to simply limp arm and shrug while standing up. It's dangerous because it brings your arm close to your neck, which is exactly what the applier of the submission needs to be successful. This defense works very well when the applier does not have a good enough top control or the applier doesn't want to commit to the role. As it turns out, this was the right defense to use in this instance, and Costa escapes unscathed. The only other instance I could find of Paulo having to defend a legit attempt was back in his jungle fight days. He was well aware of this incoming armbar as he was laying down some intense ground and pound, and got his arm out of danger as his opponent tried to cut the angle. But he had just hurt this guy pretty badly on the feet, and was continuing to do so on the ground. So while this defense wasn't nothing, it also wasn't anything for me to get too excited about. I went back and forth in my head on whether or not to include an actual score for this part of the analysis. On the one hand, he's never been submitted in his career and defended a couple legit attempts. Based on the way he moves and his jujitsu background, my gut tells me his sub defense is pretty good. I simply haven't seen enough of it in action yet nor have I seen it utilized against high-level submission artists yet, so I'm going to have to omit this as a scorable category. Time for some offense. Let's go with takedown offense. Paulo Costa is a very aggressive and pressure-intensive style of fighter. He moves and advances until his opponents are close to the fence, and there isn't anything particularly sophisticated going on here, but that doesn't mean his tackles aren't effective. Paulo's best attack is this high single leg that he does an excellent job of getting to and turning the corner on to swing his opponents down. Here he does a fantastic job of pinning foes in such a way that makes getting back up quickly difficult despite being so close to the fence, which is oftentimes used as a tool to reset to a standing position by many fighters. So nice job by Costa. I'd like to highlight the improvement I've seen in his technique against the cage too. Some of his earlier fights show a stark contrast in skill level as you can see him trying to catapult this dude over his head from a position that has zero leverage. Something that would be damn near impossible to do even for those that partake in a little bit of secret juice. The secret juice. My main criticisms of Costa's takedown game are that there's really not much going on in terms of diversity. Single legs, trips, maybe a double leg attempted somewhere throughout his career. His best open mat takedown is when he catches kicks, but it's not like that's happening all the time. He needs to diversify his skill set against the fence and find more success in general in the open space. But considering the improvements he's made already, I don't think it's a stretch to imagine him being able to do this sometime soon. Paulo is not a takedown machine, but based on aggression and one or two reliable techniques, I'll give him the score of 7.5 for this. Let's go over another good one for Costa, ground and pound offense. On the surface, the sheer violence of Costa's ground and pound strikes are enough to land him A tier. Strong elbows and punches from half guard, hammer fists from hard to defend angles, and massively destructive power shots. In my humble opinion, these are not even the highlight of the Brazilian's gravel boxing. I think what makes it most dangerous is Paulo's emphasis on passing to mount and back mount. 
Whenever the fight hits the floor, this middleweight is looking to advance position. He can absolutely beat guys up from their guard, but he understands that if he passes, the opportunities to strike will be easier and more numerous. He uses guard breaks and strikes to get out from around the legs of opponents. And once he gets to mount or back mount, Costa knows how to score points big time. He also knows how to completely mess up all that by losing control and even getting completely reversed at times. I guarantee Paulo's finishing rate would skyrocket if he did a better job of holding these two key positions. To be fair, this usually only happens against the high level grapplers, so I'm not going to roast him too much for this. All in all, it may at times look like unskilled barbarism when you see Paulo Costa throw 35 right hands in a row from a dude's guard, but when almost all of them land, it's hard to argue with those results. A lot of it comes down to killer instinct and a sixth sense about when an opponent is on their way out and fading. And that seems like something Paulo has. So for ground and pound offense, I'll give him the score of 8.75. Last thing to discuss is submission offense. And I've gotta be honest, I expected to see more out of the eraser for this section. Until I remembered that he has like no submission wins on his record. In spite of my poorest memory and his lack of finishes with submissions, there are a few positives to reflect on. The first thing goes hand in hand with the last category. The more you find yourself in the mount and back mount positions, the more you're going to increase the chance of snatching a joint lock or choke. So as long as he keeps doing that and does a better job of maintaining these advantageous positions, without being swept, that is definitely a plus here. He does have one submission win on his pro record and one from the tough house as well. The former was a rear naked choke win that looked pretty decent without context, but the more I look at it, the less impressed I am. But this guy had also just been beaten up pretty badly on the feet and the ground first. His standing guillotine in the tough house was a little bit more impressive. He snatched up the guy's neck while defending a takedown and just leaned right into it. There may have been some muscling involved here, but hey, work with what you got, I suppose. I need to be a that may actually be the main flaw of this part of his offense, though. Every other sub attempt that I've witnessed him go for has been a clumsy fumble or a complete overcommitment of energy. It's like night and day when compared to the skill and finesse he displays to obtain these dominant positions. The best example of this being his one loss on the show where he very nicely got to the rear body triangle but gassed himself out so badly going for the rear naked choke that he was literally falling on his face in exhaustion by the end of the fight. If you take into account the rest of his ground skills and his ability to grow and improve, it's not impossible to see Borchina racking up some more submissions at some point. But as it stands right now, this skill set may be more of a liability than an asset at an elite level. For submission offense, he will score a 6 out of 10. When all the scores are tallied up and I get the average, it gives Paulo Costa the total grade of about 7.8 overall. When I tally up the scores you gave him on the Discord, it gives him the total grade of about 7.4 overall. Paulo has remained an intimidating force within the organization, despite only having fought just a handful of times in the past several years. I think that goes to show that he is more than an aggressive powerhouse. He is the fully well-rounded martial artist that I expected him to be. I'm excited to see him fight next and to see how his career progresses going forward. So that just about does it for this episode of How Good Is Their Grappling. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please check out the Patreon and channel memberships so you can get early access to videos like this. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Take care.